just had a major shakeup at the state house, and this is of course an election year uh, for any number of races: governor, secretary of state, Providence mayor. Um, I think all of the House of Representatives and all of the Senate are open. So my first question is, I mean, and so many of the things I learned in my article that are holding us back from being greener, be it a statewide plastic bag ban that's currently up at the state house, or a comprehensive compost bill, or uh, the resilient Rhode Island bill that uh, Abel wrote a little sidebar on. Uh, what, what do you think the shakeup that just happened at the state house means for green things? Are we going in the same direction, slower, faster? And what could this election year bring potentially in terms of green policies in the state? <laughs> Come for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a state house reporter because I'd probably get assaulted if I was up there, but I, I don't know enough about all the individual players and who's running yet because you know I will hopefully the time we vote, but it seems like it's just a constant we're running to stand still. I don't I mean we lost I don't think the change in House Speaker, it shook up uh, different committees and stuff, but I, I think it's just the status quo. I don't, we have, we have to vote, vote in people, we're talking about uh, the environment here being green, that prioritize this. And I don't think, I mean there's some, don't get me wrong, that are up there now that do, but for the most part it's a collective, it's not a high priority, it's always Growth, 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 build, build, build. Look at the slopes bill last year that was passed uh, so developers could have an easier time or so they wouldn't have to do as much paperwork before they built something so they can build build on slopes and so forth. I mean, it's, it's the environment and social justice are always way down the bottom. And it has been like that at least as long as I've been here. And it's only been about 10 years. But I'm not saying there's not individuals that are fighting for it, but it, collectively, it's, it's not a priority. And I don't, we have to vote out, we have to vote in people that will make it a priority. And I think if we make those two things a priority, I honestly believe a lot of all these other problems that we have will be fixed, will be addressed. Well, th there must be states where the growth discussion and the green discussion aren't as far apart as they seem here, right? Mass. How do we get those things closer to one another? You know what I mean? Have Better politicians? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also educated. Uh, it's, I mean, all the people here uh, do great work for, you know, advocating for this. Without these people up here, I'm not including myself, we wouldn't have a lot of these things. It's always the grassroots. We always got to keep pounding, pounding, pounding for these environmental and social justice issues, at least in this state, at least in the 10 years I've been here, it seems like. So to change that, how do we get that? We have to get more people that will embrace it and they won't push back against the stuff Jamie, Abel, Sheila are doing. I mean, how do we do that? Break the break the cycle and bring in new blood. But as Abel said, there's not that many people that that run. I mean, how many races are uncontested? A lot. Uh, I know the mayor's race here isn't, but throughout the state, it is. It's the same people and it's the same stuff. And they basically, a lot of them just want to keep the status quo. Now you know why I'm not allowed at the state. <laughs> <laughs> and if Abel and Jamie aren't going to make the pitch, that those two organizations, <laughs> you know do endorse candidates for office, and they look at the pro-environment record of candidates, they help to recruit those candidates, and help knock on doors, talk to people about the issues, and make sure that it is part of the environmental dialogue. I'm going to ask Sheila a quick, maybe easier question. We're in the city of Providence. Uh, what happens in Providence in terms of green policy obviously has major implications for the state. Can you tell this crowd a bit about the plan that's coming out later this spring? Yes, I'd be glad to talk about that. So the Sustainable Providence Plan um, is the plan to achieve Mary Angel Tavares' six sustainability goals. Um, so uh, as Phil mentioned, I'm the first ever director of sustainability for the city of Providence, and that meant that we had to make up what do we mean by sustainability in the city of Providence. Um, and so the mayor set goals in the categories of energy, food, water, waste, land use and economic development, and transportation. For where do we want to be over the next 20 years in each of those three areas? They're on our website, providencri.com, or come see me.